Bhagavad Gita, verse 3.2 My intelligence is somewhat bewildered by your apparently ambiguous statements. Please, therefore, tell me decisively which path will be most auspicious for me. Sarar Davarshini Sri Bhagavan is saying, O friend, Arjuna, it is a fact that because the bhakti that is beyond the modes is transcendental, it is the most superior process. But such bhakti can only be attained by the mercy of my great devotee, who is discriminating and one-pointed to me. It can never be attained by one's own endeavor. Therefore, become free from the material modes of nature. I bless you that by performing bhakti to me, which is transcendental to the modes of nature, you will also become transcendental. When this blessing fructifies, you will achieve this very bhakti by the mercy of such a great devotee. But as I have already said, at present you are eligible to perform your prescribed duty, karma, only. This is the truth. Arjuna then says, If this is so, then why do you not tell me definitively to engage exclusively in karma? Why are you drowning me in an ocean of doubts? Arjuna is thus speaking this verse beginning with Yami Shrena Eva, which has various implications. He's saying, by such statements, you are bewildering my intelligence. Initially, you said, Karmani Eva Dikarashti, you only have the qualification to perform karma, your prescribed duty. Gita 2.47 Then you said, Siddhi asitoho samubhudva samadvam yoga ujyate. The equanimity in which one remains equipoised in both success and failure is called yoga. Gita 2.48 then again you said, Buddhi yukto jahatiha ube sukrita duskrite tasmat yogaya yu yasva yogaha karmasu kaushalam. Intelligent persons abandon both pious and impious activities, and because Buddhi yoga is the art of work, they endeavor for Nishkama Karma, selflessly offering the fruits of their work to the Supreme. Gita 2.50 Here, by the word Yoga, you are also referring to an accumulation of knowledge, or Jnana. You then say, Yadati Moha Kalilam Buddhir Vatitarishyati When your intelligence crosses beyond the dense forest of delusion. Gita 2.52 Here again, you are simply speaking about jnana. In fact, the word eva, like that, or it seems, implies that your statement is not ambiguous. Since you are merciful, it is not your desire to bewilder me. Besides, since I am not ignorant of these matters, it is appropriate for you to speak to me directly. The deep purport is that action, karma, in the mode of goodness is superior to action in the mode of passion. Knowledge is also in the mode of goodness, but it is superior to action in the mode of goodness. And devotion that is beyond the modes, nirguna bhakti, is far superior to knowledge. If you think that it is impossible for me 
to engage in devotion that is beyond the modes, then please simply instruct me on knowledge in the mode of goodness, by which I will become free from bondage to this miserable material world. Sarar Devarshini Prakashika Riti Action performed in a mode of goodness is superior to action performed in passion. Knowledge is superior to action that is in the mode of goodness, even though knowledge is also in the mode of goodness. Sattvat Sanjayati Jnanam From the mode of goodness, Sattvaguna, real knowledge develops. Gita 14.17 Superior to knowledge in the mode of goodness is devotion that is completely free from the contamination of the three modes of material nature, Nirguna Bhakti. This is defined as follows in Srimad Bhagavatam 3.29.11-12 Mad Guna Shruti Madrina Mai Sarva Kuhushaye Manugatir Avi Chinna Yata Ganga Paso Dunau Lakshanam Bhakti Yogasya Nirgunasya Hi Udaritam Ahaituki Avya Vahita Ya Bhaktihi Purushotame While Kapila Deva was instructing his mother Devahuti in Nirguna Bhakti, He said, Just as the water of the Ganges river flows naturally and without sensation towards the ocean, similarly the soul flows in a natural unbroken way towards me, who am situated within the cave of the heart of the living entity. This takes place simply by hearing about my pastimes and qualities which are blessed with extraordinary potency. It is called Nirguna Bhakti Yoga, Transcendental Devotion. Nirguna Bhakti is free from any desire other than to serve me. It is also devoid of the dualities of the material world, which arise from forgetfulness of Krishna, and it absorbs the performer in continuous service in a mood that is favorable to me, the Supreme Person, Purushottama. To forget Krishna and become absorbed in illusion, Maya, is called Dritya Abhinivesha, absorption in a second or false object. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.37 This gives rise to various separate interests, such as I, mine, you and yours.